<laughs> Thank you very much, <coughs> members of the audience. On this happy event, so, oh, who's going to advance the slide? Shall I do it? <coughs> On this happy event, celebrating the 80th anniversary of the Institute, I want to make a few remarks looking both forwards and backwards. Retrospectively, we've heard today that the Institute is named after Eduardo Troya in honor of a very distinguished engineer and architect as well as a man of vision. Many of his works, sadly not all, remain to remind us of his combination of skills. We learned that last night at the dinner. Next slide. Like Spain, the Institute has lived through troubled times. In the past 80 years, <clears throat> both have experienced the change from a period of relative isolation of Spain to its modern role as an integrated member of a European community, as well as one with a more loose-knit but very real international links and member of an international community. The adjustments necessary over that time have not been easy, and we shouldn't forget that. But I'm an optimist, and I view the Western world as entering a period of relative stability, one which is free from conflict and marked by more rational conduct of its affairs. Many in this new era question the role of institutes such as this. Do they have a world future? We live in an era of instant and total communication. Do institutes have a future or are they obsolete? I would argue yes. They do have an important role and I'll give a few reasons for that belief. <clears throat> the construction industry suffers from huge gaps to practice and thereby speed the application of research to real life applications. But this process involves more than just knowledge transfer. Specifications and codes are essential to permit and encourage innovation. necessary to develop a dialogue between all sectorial interests of the construction sector, including especially stakeholders.
Stakeholders are very broadly defined so as to include diverse groups, including those much maligned individuals called environmentalists, as well, of course, as the owners and operators and users of structures. The Institute, with its capabilities, technical and engineering and scientific, and independence of judgment, is well placed to act in this capacity as mediator and translator from laboratory to practice. Thus, I envisage a multifaceted role for the Institute in the decades ahead. It is uniquely suited for this role on conflict <coughs> reputation, integrity, and scientific and engineering competence. And we should not forget that quality in science and engineering and its translation into practice and achievement also achieve important social objectives. <coughs> if we don't bring the community with us to appreciate the value of what we're doing, we will be losers. The vision of Eduardo Torreya, nearly a century old, of, a, of an aesthetic and also affordable infrastructure is still, in my view, very much alive today. So I accept with gratitude and humility the honor with which you have bestowed on me. It has indeed been a pleasure to work with my many Spanish visitors and to work with the Institute and its staff. My reward is also in the form of seeing these people advance to positions of responsibility and making original contributions leading to advances in science and engineering. Thus, I'm confident that the Institute will have a bright future and wish it well in the time to come. Thank you.